This patient presents with a need for a new restoration on tooth number 14 due to an old amalgam that has decay around the margins and several fracture lines, which in combination will influence the way in which this tooth is prepped. We're going to capture digital impressions with the blue cam. We're going to see just how much more efficient this is relative to a physical impressioning method. We can capture these digital impressions in seconds rather than minutes, and the patient doesn't have to endure any uncomfortable impressioning material in her mouth. Looking at the clinical preoperative view, there's an old amalgam uh, that has decay around the margins, and there's a fractured area of the mesial marginal ridge, as well as a fracture through the mesial lingual cusp. These factors are going to influence the way in which I'm going to prep this tooth. In fact, I plan to prep the old amalgam off and also to remove the mesial lingual cusp, thus uh, providing uh, for an MOL onlay in the final restoration. Now that this tooth is prepped, we're ready to do the digital impressioning. As you can see from the photograph, this tooth has now been prepped for an MOL onlay. And the features of the prep are quite simply those that are related to CIRAC, CAD CAM, all ceramic dentistry. They are divergent prep walls, rounded transitions from a horizontal to a vertical surface, 90 degree exit angles, and adequate reduction for the material that we're going to use. Now that I've completed the prep for this onlay, I'm going to capture a bite registration. In order to do so accurately, I'm going to verify that, go ahead and close Laura, that she has a holding contact distal to the tooth I prepped, and indeed she does. Open. And I'm going to now inject the bite registration directly into the prep, filling just above the level of the occlusal plane, but covering the prep only. After the bite registration has been injected, then I'm going to have our patient close directly into the bite while holding shim stock on the known holding contact, as was done previously. Now that we've got a good bite registration, it's time to coat the area with OptiSpray. You'll notice that I'm spraying at about a 45 degree angle from a point distal to the bite registration across the buccal aspect, and then also at about a 45 degree angle across the lingual aspect from the distal to the mesial covering uh, three teeth along the way. Now we're going to begin capturing images for the bite registration in the live capture mode. So I'll insert, insert the camera and centering first on the bite registration itself. We'll capture that and then go to the tooth distal to it. And then also the two teeth to the mesial. Now we can simply pop the bite registration off, powder the prep a little bit. So now I'm going to dry the prep just a bit and then touch up the prep with a little Opti spray. So I'm going to go directly back into the mouth, again, spray just a bit of Opti spray over the prep, and then we'll be ready to capture our images. We'll activate the blue cam again. Go straight over the preparation itself and center directly over that. And then go slightly to the distal. And then move to the mesial. in order to capture my preparation images and the adjacent teeth. Now we have both the bite registration and the preparation virtual model. We're ready to begin the design on this onlay on tooth number 14. So now we have a virtual model of the preparation and we're ready to begin the design for this onlay for tooth number 14. I'm simply going to go straight to the step of trimming the bite registration. The goal here is to trim the bite registration such that the only portion that remains is that portion which covers the prep itself. So I'm going to draw a, an outline of that and now we can see that's what I have that remains, just the portion that covers the prep. I'm going to go forward to the next step and you utilize the automatic margin finder. So you can see that the software is actually locating the margin for me. And locate that margin by clicking across the subgingival area. So in a matter of seconds, I now have the margin drawn to my liking. 
and I can go to the next step. At the next step, which is the actual design proposal or biogeneric tooth proposal step, you'll see a, what amounts to a generic full coverage crown that is adjusted and shifted relative to the prep, uh, the bite registration, and also the proximal tooth surface. And then as it finishes its adjustment, as you can see, the tooth morphology changes to that of a biologically correct tooth morphology, taking into account the morphology of the remaining unprepped tooth structure, thus harmonizing this restoration with the residual tooth structure that remains. We can take a quick look at the contact area on the interproximal and verify that we are happy with the thickness, the width, the strength of that proximal contact and this restoration is now ready to mill. So let's mill this and then we'll do a dry try-in before any finishing of the restoration and bonding. It's time to go to the milling preview and then begin the design or rather milling process. So at the milling preview we simply hit mill and then select the type of block and the size and click OK, at which point the milling instrument will prepare itself to receive the block of ceramic and then we can simply hit start either from the screen or from the milling unit itself in order to begin the milling procedure. Right, now that the restoration has been milled and the sprue has been removed, we're going to do a dry try-in to verify the marginal fit and also the occlusal fit. So I've got it fully seated. I'm going to take a quick look here. Good. And then I'm going to have Laura go ahead and close on that shim stock in the same location that the holding contact existed before and that holding contact still does exist distal to the restoration indicating that the static occlusal relationship is correct open real big. Now I'm going to take a little bit larger mirror and let you take a, a glance at the marginal fit. So now that we've verified fit it's time to bond the restoration and I'm going to start by drying the tooth off and then I'm going to place a coat of unfilled resin self-etching primer combination scrubbing it into the dentin for 20 seconds very thoroughly and along the way maintaining good isolation. Then we'll air thin that just a bit, make sure there is no pooling down in the base of the prep, and then light cure that as per the manufacturer's instructions. Once the light curing is completed, then I can go back to the mouth with the resin and coat the uh, preparation surfaces with the resin, taking care not to miss any areas and applying a liberal amount of resin along the way. Once that's complete, then we'll insert the restoration into the preparation and allow the excess resin to flow out uh, the adjacent areas, as you see here. So we seat the restoration, pressing into place with a, an instrument. And once we know that it's completely seated, then we can come back and do a little tack cure uh, with a curing light and of course do a little cleanup before the final cure. Now that we've delivered the restoration, let's take a look at it. You can see we've got a highly aesthetic and conservative all ceramic CAD CAM onlay. Moreover, let me have the shim stock. I have not touched the occlusal surface at all in terms of adjustments. Close all the way down. And Lori, Laura is holding shim stock very nicely on the contact distal to the tooth that's been restored. So in this example we saw a CAD CAM onlay created via this new digital impressioning system with the CIRAC AC Blue Cam. And the result was that we had a restoration that fit perfectly, not only marginally but also in terms of the occlusal fit. This restoration we know is going to last this patient for many years to come.